Greetings, my fellow subjects. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Project Zomboid King of Louisville, Episode 5, Louis the Psychic. The good news is, my refrigerator is upstairs now. And there was a microwave here that I'm going to bring upstairs as well. I have warm food. Might not have a warm bed. Ooh, a meta event. Perhaps that brought some uh, some of those ankle biters in the apartment complex further away. Now don't put it there. Ingle it. Ingle it, you Philistine. Jesus. All right. Oh, and you put it in the floor. I hate you. Place there. Whatever. I don't care if it's backwards. Uh, yeah, let me get the duffel. I also should, um, uh, tune the radio to the emergency frequency, which is 94.4, so that I know what tomorrow is going to be like. It's called emergency. And maybe put the food away. So if it's uh, perishables, I'm going to grab it and stick it in the freezer. The way that uh, food perishing or food rots in this game is... If it's refrigerated, the time it takes to rot is halved. If it's frozen, it's quadrupled. If it's jarred, it's uh, times eight. So if you... And then there's a hidden rot value. So if you have an almost fully rotted onion, for instance, and you stick it in the freezer, it's not going to keep for very long because you've only just stuck it in. So the sooner that you can freeze it, the better, and the more lasting it, it, it will keep. Uh, so Operation Bug was a bust. Uh, I could still barricade up the entryways, which wouldn't be a terrible idea. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is to bring storage upstairs, so I'm going to do that now. Because there's not a lot of daylight hours left, and my guy's already pretty tired, so I don't want to get in any fights. Plus, I know that there's a horde just across the street, so I want to keep things quiet. Lucky for me, these metal shelves are always... they never break. They're always uh, movable. The power is still running, the water is still running. Yeah, I still have water and power for now. It's only day four, so it would be pretty unusual. I mean, it'd be possible, but it'd be pretty unusual for to, to lose it this early. I think, I think tomorrow, what I might end up trying is I might, um, I might go and check out the gun store across the way. Somewhat. I'm not going to go into the secured areas, but I'll go into the areas I have access to. I have plans for the secured area. That's going to take some time to, uh, to realize. I have no need for these uh, storage containers. They don't store very much. Hey, bud. Are you alive? <laughs> and I'll replace them with metal shelves. Come 
Much better. I like how the papers were just like yoinked. And if you wanted a little bit of organization, it's not happening, but at least I'm storing things on shelves. So, partial organization, I guess. Step one. Let's go get the other metal shelf. I'll stick the, uh, the sledge inside. So I think tomorrow I will use my carpentry skill. I, I would have liked to, ha well... No, I think first I'm going to go across the street to see if I can find any books that might be useful. Um, like level up books. And then I will uh, button up this um, I'll button up this warehouse so that it's walled in. So that unless zombies break their, their way in, I can't get jumped with my back turned. Because like right now, there's nothing stopping a zombie from like waltzing through that open doorway. And just kill it, you're ganking me. And I don't want that to happen. So, good amount of storage here. My little... My rad loft. You like what it did there? Will Zed's respawn? Yeah, eventually. Tis the way of apocalypse. The way respawns work in Project Zomboid is any area that you have not visited in the last 72 hours has a chance for respawns. So if as long as I stay, as long as I frequent a certain area around me every 72 hours, I won't get any respawns. So they're not going to be respawning around me, uh, but they will respawn anywhere I haven't been for a while. How's my weight? 80 and holding. Nice. I'm not gaining weight anymore. It's uh, stabilizing. I ate just the right amount of stuff. Also, I have no idea how this this cherry, for instance, that I'm just eating is not frozen yet. Nor is the onion. It's been in the freezer for like hours. But magical. Magical ice proof. All right. Another, another night of really bad sleep. Oh, well. Just the way it is. Can you disable this for single player? Um, there is a ton of uh, server settings that you can just pick and choose. There's like maybe uh, 200 different options for how you want to set up your Zomboid. So however you want it, you can set it up to not respawn or to respawn like constantly and with no safe zone, like how, however you want the game allows. Seriously, this stupid vending machine stops me from filling up my stuff at this water fountain. I, like, can't click the water fountain. It's really annoying. Uh, current priority is going to be um, wall up the bottom floor. Actually, go for a go to the shop across the way. 
and see if there's anything nice. Why not just move the vending machine? I could, it's just not worth the effort. Eventually, water's gonna get cut to everything, and, and I'm not gonna be able to get water out of that fountain uh, anyway. All right, so there's a rather large group to my northeast. Ooh. Key? Oh! <gasps> well, hello! I have a working cab. Don't know if it has fuel, but I have gas cans. It looks in pretty good shape. The trunk doesn't look great. Nor the windshield, but at least the hood looks okay, which is usually an indicator that the engine's good. Uh, it actually even has gas. Nice. So this cab is mine. That's good news. Nice. Military desert boots. That's what I want. Right, so I'm looking for eh, just whatever I might find useful, like ropes or uh, clothing. Ponchos actually might be useful. Because if it rains, well, eh, no, I have outdoorsmen. Rain's not going to bother me. I could make a tent. So maybe I should get tent legs. Uh, let me Google um, or just look up how to make a tent again. Because that'd be another way to like have sleep. I probably can find a tent, but uh, four tent legs and two sturdy sticks makes a tent. Uh, plus tarp. So I'll have the makings for a tent. Ooh, a scarf. Great. Time to overheat. Seeing the scarf reminds me that I haven't... Um, I haven't tailored my clothing yet, which is long overdue. Sewing the leather into it so it's protected. That hand axe, it's a really good uh, backup weapon. Put on the belt. Tons of military boots. So one more tent lay. Oh, big hiking bag. That's what I'm talking about. Much, much, much better. My carry weight just went up a lot. And this is the last tent peg that I needed. Now I just need some sticks. Oh, or just a whole tent kit. Never mind. Yeah, I knew that you could find tent kits in here, but now I just have a, a packed tent that I could just deploy. I'm grabbing the rope in case I ever need to haul um, a lot of lumber wood together. Can you repair your weapons? Depends on the weapon. Not all weapons can be repaired, like the crossbow or crossbow. The um, the crowbar that I have on me can't. But most wooden weapons can. Uh, a van key. Cool. Another tent kit. Uh, tent kits aren't bad to have in a trunk of the car you're using, so that if you have to make camp somewhere weird. You've got it. And that's pretty much going to be it for me. So I, I probably have uh, the key to that step van, and that step van looks to be in terrific condition, so super psyched about that. It looks pretty mint. 
You know what? Why not wear skew goggles? And then here are some cots. What is a sleep quality average? What is a tent sleep quality? That's not how to set up a tent. Uh, if I have a choice between a cot and a tent, I'm going to go with a cot anyway. Or a stretcher bed. And they don't break, so... So now I have somewhere to sleep on. You never imagined U.S. military gear would be sold in a shop? Uh, <laughs> that's actually... Uh, Army surplus stores is totally a thing in America. And very common to see. Where it's just like... Just camo and whatever else. It's super, super typical. I think I have fewer corpses uh, outside of this wall here, because there's obviously a lot of corpses to the north and south. So I think a bed here is going to be uh, statistically furthest from uh, from zombies. Uh, I'm not doing any organization uh, at the moment. I'm just uh, shoving everything in. That was a good haul. That was a good haul. Cool. Alright, I'm super hungry. Let's try to eat something fresh. Onion and fries. All right. The uh, the current priority now is to secure the bottom. Floor, wow, I can't spell right now, of the warehouse. I want to be a little bit more safe than having open doorways. In fact, I'll probably punch out the doorway and make it walls, as that's, uh, that's more secure than doors. Is this a base? For now. It's the start of a base. Alright, my vegetables have been eaten. Oh, I, uh, I'll just grab one of the sledgehammers from down here. So for me to be able to wall this up, I'm going to be building uh, wooden walls because I don't know how to make metal ones yet. There's plenty of um, scrap wood around here that I can use. But... Um, the issue is that uh, the door frames that got... You have to uh, knock out the door frames to be able to build walls. So I'm going to knock out the door frames. It does mean that the door frames, the walls that I build, will be vulnerable and destroyable by zombies. But that's fine, because the doors would have been anyway. I got some friends. Oh, 
I hope the uh, apartment people are gone. So I'm not ready for this party to grow in size yet. I'm gonna have to peel, yeah, peel this group away. They're way too close for me to construct anything. Having the military boots is really nice. When I stomp, it hurts. It's police. Can you replace broken garage doors? Uh, yes, but not not with the way they used to look. You can build wooden ones in its place. Or fence ones, if you want fences. But not like the, the drop metal ones. Not like this. So yes, but but only sort of. I'm going to need to move the van out of the way. I still have no idea how this thing still runs. But also started up on first attempt. Which is incredible. So I'll be doing wall frames to fill this in. It's not invulnerable like the vanilla f fixtures are, but it's better than it open. Because I don't really know, I, I don't really have good carpentry skills, I don't want to break down these boxes just yet, because that would I'd be ruined in them. Fix our savior van, and maybe at some point I'll have the mechanic skill to do it. It's pretty low on the priority, given that I live in a really dense city. The need for a uh, a vehicle is pretty low, in my opinion. Until I need to go on long trips. So you can see how absolutely garbage the walls that I can make are, but. That's what it's going to look like for now. And I can try to park some vehicles in front to uh, dissuade zombies. Oh, they're already bashing it. Okay. Uh, apparently I can't <laughs> exit that way. <laughs> Game tried to wiggle me to death. So they're already damaging my my mint wall. Rude. Let's go deal with that. Nope. Wrong way, Louie.
Yo! Ain't nobody invited you to my loft. Or you. I like how it was just open. You could have just walked in. <laughs> Can zombies still through, see through that? No, despite the fact that it looks like garbage, it's technically a solid object as far as the game's concerned. Same way that like three planks on a window will obscure vision. You don't need a fourth. Gives you a little bit of a uh, wiggle room. So let's get the remainder planked up. It's not to keep them from bust it busting in. It's so that I can hear them attempt. Because as it is now, there's nothing stopping them from just like walking in. Right? Because it's open. So it's, it's not so much for its durability. It's so that there's at least some warning if perimeter has been breached. Because I, I, I'd like to be able to be down on this floor without the feeling like I'm going to get killed at any moment. So that I can time accelerate and things like that that you wouldn't otherwise do in a dangerous uh, zone. So I need uh, six more planks. And then I think after this, it would be wise for me to attempt to get um, books and uh, tapes for me to consider moving that taxi that I have and uh, checking out the van that I have access to. Oh, actually, before that, uh, I need a gangplank indoors uh, to prevent choppers from seeing me. That, I think, takes precedent over everything else. I like hear a zombie. I don't like it. Wouldn't I have, rather have a red heart at? Nah. I'm good with yellow. heard you. You gone, loser. Oh, and you too. If the van's going to be able to cover up all four walls, probably just three of them. That's going to be really nice. Just to lower the chance this gets broken down. What I could do is tow uh, one of the cars that are around to block up the, the one that I can't, but I don't care enough. Now, the only unfortunate part is one of the windows that I could have used in his escape is right above this van, which makes it awkward to, 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 to use, but whatever. All right, so we have got a secure perimeter. That's good. Uh, the next thing is... Cover all windows in the warehouse. This way, uh, if there is a chopper, uh, I have the ability to hide from said chopper rather than I having the chopper bring down holy hell on me. 
There's only one chopper attack, um, or whatever. It's not technically an attack, but only one chopper incident on uh, this difficulty. But I'm going to want to be ready for it all the same. Why can't I destroy this? What is going on here? The destroy is not working. I'll try from over here. So it's these second story windows. Yeah, destroy is still not working. Hello? Can I not get these railings? Because that means if I can't, I'm going to have to get... Um... Is there a reason not to destroy all the second... Uh, floor walls. I don't... Are you attacking the right thing? Yeah, okay. Good. He is now. I know what was going on. It was... I was trying to destroy... Oh, no. The railings are on the other side. That's what's happening. The railings are not... Yeah, they're built on one side. I don't know how I'm going to get to that window, then. With With much effort. So I can't, uh, I can't break down. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to build a, build a wooden plank here and, like, plank over. It's gonna be a lot of planking. So the reason not to destroy all the walls would be, uh, zombies can see you. Helicopters can see you. So if I did choose to, like, bust all the walls on the second floor, any zombie that spotted me would then subsequently swarm and the noise that the swarm would make would cause seriously there was a rope right there you moron uh the noise that the swarm would make would bring in more zombies to make a larger swarm and and it could get to a point where there's so many zombies around the perimeter of of where you live that you can't leave the base in like only really in the most extreme situations but it's hypothetically possible that that could happen which would be no bueno so That would be at least my reason for not uh, not removing all the walls. You used to be able to build uh, floors on the other side of the railing. I don't think you can anymore. So this is just going to be labor intensive. It's too bad that I don't have the carpentry book to make more bang for my buck doing all this work. If I had the carpentry book, at least I'd get some extra bonus ex experience breaking all these down. What I'm just trying to do is uh, gain access to all the crates, because I, ha I haven't even searched them all yet. Some of them have planks. But building a gangplank system over to the... Um, over to the windows that I don't normally have access to will give me more options about how I want to leave the base if it gets overrun. So I'll have um, I'll have uh, sheet ropes in more directions, which is really handy to have. This looks awkward. Can I? Okay. No, it's impassable. Good. So you can see the gangplanks, and I'll just be going around the perimeter out to this door, or this window, to be able to, uh, to cover it with a sheet. Uh, but that will have to wait for tomorrow, because my dude's pretty tired. How do you move multiple select? Uh, left shift. Left, sh left shift allows you to select multiple and and then drag. Oh, am I? Uh, the water might be cut. Drink. 
Yep, the water's cut. I don't have running water anymore. Noted. All the more reason to get my carpentry up. So I can get rain barrels. At least I had toilet water? Indeed. At least I had toilet water. Alright, the current priority is co still cover all the win windows in the warehouse, I think. Because that's going to keep me safe from the chop. But I may need to go get water coolers from the surrounding area. Before I get back to work, I'm going to do a quick perimeter check. Make sure there aren't any zombies like on top of me. Looks pretty good. How goes this world? Uh, pretty good. Hell, Kilgore, I uh, messaged you on Discord, by the way. You were one of the ones that won the, uh, the survey uh, giveaway. So I owe you a free video game. So message me on Discord later. And congratulations for winning the survey. You can steal metal barrels from the refugee camp. Yeah, and there's other areas on the map that have um that have metal barrels that you can, or um, regular barrels that you can take too. So there's ways if you don't if you don't know carpentry, there's ways to still obtain water. Plus, I could round up every paint bucket that um, like these paint buckets and just put the empty buckets on the uh, on the roof, and then boil the water that's in there um, to purify it. You know, there, there's a lot of different methods to to keep yourself uh, hydrated. There is not one solution. So I could start collecting paint buckets for that reason. Hey, pineapple pizza. Thank you for the resup. And howdy to you too. I think at this point I've searched all of, or most of the impassables. So I'm going to be down to uh, needing to break these boxes down for um, for planks. Unfortunately, my carpentry skill is bad, so most of it is not going to be planks. They're going to be scrap wood, which is fine if I need to start a source of fire, I suppose. It could be worse. Yeah, the way they laid this out was definitely not efficient. So you don't have access to all the... Ooh, a machete. You got my attention. You don't have access to all of the crates. Um, all the boxes without breaking some down. But I actually like that design. Because then it forces you to do some work. You can't just breeze through a warehouse and take all of its best stuff. Which is really important for uh, multiplayer. Because in multiplayer, if you could just breeze through a warehouse and grab all the best stuff, uh, new players to a multiplayer server that doesn't have loot respawn, or a multiplayer server that's just heavily trafficked, it would be really difficult for new players to actually get stuff. Because most of the stuff that they would get would be picked over. If it was really easy to pick over stuff.
Really? I need one more? That pains me. It's strange that I haven't found an antique oven. There's actually a uh, another warehouse just to my southwest that has that could have an antique oven too. So an antique stove. I'm not all that concerned. Plus, it's it's not a relevant thing that you need until um because you can always cook on a cooking stove or a, a campfire. So it's not really a relevant thing that you're gonna need until it's winter and you need to stay warm, and that's a long way off. So having a perimeter allows me to accelerate the deconstruction of these boxes, which is really nice for you guys, so you don't have to wait forever. There is a lot of paint buckets here, so I'll be able to make a makeshift um, a makeshift water collection, like I live in Bermuda or whatever. I can make do. That might be a next step, given that I've lost water. Because as long as I don't lose power, I can always sterilize water in a microwave. Don't ask how. It just works. that curtain go okay and then the reason I wanted to build all the way over here is so that I can hop which is way more convenient than uh, going all the way around I can eventually fill this all in with flooring if I want to build more. So this is the roof. My lovely roof. I can start putting the empty paint buckets up here to collect water if I want. But uh, first things first, I do want to cover up the windows, so there is a lot more windows to cover. I just wish I was getting more wood for it. So how many more windows are there? Is the question. I think there's four more windows for me to cover. Two in the south and one on the west. Kind of a lot. There's not going to be boxes left in this place once I'm done. I'm not producing uh, usable wood from any of this. As you can see. Carpenter 2 clocks me as a complete idiot in terms of how to use a hammer and, and nails. Still. There's not really a better way. Because I don't... Uh, I don't think that there's a carpenter book nearby. Or a bookstore nearby. Maybe I should check. So there's beers and liquor to my west. There's an automotive shop to my southwest. To my east, there is a pawn shop, which might have some interesting um, readables. Uh, then there is a nightclub to my east. Further, oh God, further east. That's a, what is that? It's an inn. There's a uh, arcade. There is a hardware store sort of nearby, which might have generator books. There is also Spiffos nearby and other pawn shops, which might have um, periodicals. Uh, there's an animal shelter, which might have medical supplies. And then. Um, yeah. I could try to hit up the pawn shop. That's not a terrible idea to see if there's uh, magazines or something there useful. 
I wanted to get this project done um, before the prospects of a chopper, just so that I'm more chopper protected. But worst case scenario, I could always go up a level, upstairs in the stairwell, and just like hang out there for the chopper duration. Because the chopper is not going to be be able to spot me if I'm um, if I'm here. Boring. I would need a book or or ten. But um, that's uh, honestly not a bad idea. So maybe I'll bring some books up there. So if I do have to chop, just hide from the chopper, I can do it uh, easily. Cheers. I still haven't marked down all of the uh, books that I own, though. Long overdue. All right, buddy. Do chairs provide a bonus when you use them to read? No. Uh, chairs do uh, provide a bonus for when you... Um, uh, for fatigue recovery. If you sit, but not any different than sitting on the ground. Chopper's here. So I guess I'm sitting here. What's the what's the what's the chance of that, man? Alright, current priority is reading time to hide from the chopper. No, they can't see me here because there's no windows. This is a windowless little like, stairwell. So. I'm fast forwarding time, but you can hear the chopper going all over the place. If it had spot me, it would be hovering over my head. It is definitely not hovering over my head, so it doesn't know where I am. The floor I was on, if you take a look here. Um, there is a window here, a window here, and a window here that is not covered. And in being not covered, it would be possible for choppers to see me through those windows. And I don't want to take that risk. Getting spotted. Which would suck. I was trying to cover up all the windows in time, but now I don't need to. I mean, it still helps because it, it covers, it um, protects me from zombies seeing me through them. But uh, that was the only chopper and there won't be another one. I also managed to fully read the uh, electrical, or uh, cookbook rather. Why do I have a random leaf break and what? Well, empty watering can I should put on the roof. Because that will collect water. One of the boxes I was uh, trying to clear. Oh, shoot. Trying to clear out. I obviously looted. Well, that was uh, excellent timing. I was like fully prepared to camp out the chopper and then the chopper arrived. Streamer luck again, I guess. I think in the morning I'll read the magazines that I have on me uh, so that I can check them off the list. So I don't ever loot multiple copies of them unless I need the, them for kindling. Just one chopper? Yeah, it's uh it's apocalypse difficulty. Default apocalypse. Hey catloaf. Welcome to the stream. I got my own little catloaf over here. He's technically a dog loaf, but he's very cat like. Oh, 
Boy, did my dude sleep in. Thank you for tuning in to Project Zomboid King of Louisville, which originally streamed live on Twitch January 19th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, and stay safe out there, my fellow zombie slayers.